Well hello and welcome to Scalton Manor in Pembrokeshire for the Pembrokeshire Classic Car Show. Uh, we've turned up, um, not really knowing what to expect, I certainly was not expecting to find a Japanese Toyota Land Cruiser fire engine here, but uh, already I can see there is going to be some serious variety today. But yeah, look at this. Got a 4.2 litre petrol engine. Extraordinary, I remember seeing something like this um, at the... Uh, museum I went to in uh, Wanaka in uh, New Zealand. Fascinating things. I love the little <laughs> the little canvas roof. Yeah that's uh, extraordinary. It's got 2,421 miles on the clock so I don't think it's seen an awful lot of use. Quite how it's found its way to Wales I don't know but I love that it is here. We've got the uh, the Swedish battle the ever-raging battle between Volvo and Scania, well represented here. Uh, the, the 143 M Scania here is a V8, apparently. Whereas the Volvo is a Turbo 6. The old F12, very, very square rigged. Whereas that was sort of Scania's slightly streamlined cab. Slightly. Uh, we've got some Escort things, but no one yeah, likes Escorts, do, do they? Do you? Yeah, we do. Oh, we do like Escorts. Sorry, yes. Yes, these look... Um, rather mean and moody and purposeful but uh, shall we head down the lines okie dokie uh, we might I have to keep pause? quite a pace up there's an awful lot here okay well that truck's got 550 on it which suggests there may be 550 vehicles yeah well okay. so um, should we go Ford straight to this Zephyr Mark II next to a little Austin A30 Mazda MX-5 Morris Minor oh uh, it's a uh, Singer Vogue uh, drove one of those uh, last year. Lovely cars. Uh, a, a very non-standard Mini. It'll flip front on it. Still got the A-Series engine though. Uh, one of those Mark 1 Escort things. Very, very nice. Oh. Volkswagen Camper, I think we're going to see a few of those today. Uh, Jaguar XK150 Fixed Coupe. Triumph Herald, very late one, 1360. Um, Mercedes-Benz R107 SL. Reliance Sims uh, SE eight i think the um the virtuals cloud crusader Aha. based on the uh hillman imp uh we know kitcher um up and down doesn't like clan crusaders i think they're quite funky lancia beta uh the hpe version uh with the um sort of fast backs lovely window louver in the back uh, triumph dolomite bmw e28 austin healy 100 Oh, yay! Oh, no, it's a 3000, sorry. Uh, Rover 100. I think we saw that at Bali Saturday. Did we? No, yeah. I wasn't there. <laughs> no. Ford Capri. There's a couple of Panther Callistas behind. Oh, have we seen what he's here? <gasps> yes, indeed. A Renault yeah. Avon time. Nice. Oh, right, we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, Alfa Romeo Spider, Chevrolet Corvette with the pop up wiper flap. Uh, Escort Mexico. Uh, I think there are more surviving Mexicos than they ever built. Pause. Ah! Old caravan. Beautiful. I do like how it's colour coordinated to the that Rover P4 tow car. That is just beautiful. Yeah, Sorry. Is lovely. Okay, back to it. Yeah, back to the cars. Uh, Porsche 911s of various ages. A Mark III Golf oh, GTI. Oh, one for Mini Hubnut. Yeah. Oh, cheeky uh, Toyota Starlet Turbo up the back there. You say up the back, I'm not much taller than the car, so we'll Sorry. have to patiently yeah. wait till we get to those rows. <laughs> Peugeot Toro 5, nice to see in a non-GTI flavour. Nissan Sunny ZX Coupe, Triumph GT6, one of my favourites of the um, Triumph range. A uh, two litre six cylinder engine. Uh, Morris Minor TR5, which has the 2.4 litre, uh, sorry, 2.5 litre uh, six cylinder engine. Honda Civic, uh, Type R, MGF, Sunbeam Rapier. Lovely cars, the Rapiers, uh, very similar to the Singer Vogue, really, but uh, with lovely sort of pillarless styling. So both the windows go down, no pillar left. Very, very nice. Uh, we've got a Morris Marina, a Morris Marina Mark III, Mazda MX-5 Mark II, MGB GT, because obviously a Seat. Interesting. And a, a Mustang powered Ford Pop. Or Ford Model Y. Wow. That is um, imposing. I think it's the word I'm going to yeah. use for that. Lovely. <laughs> oh, look at this little beige Mini. That is um, absolutely oh, splendid. 
uh, next oh, to look. mini pickup with some big fat arches on it. Uh, a proper hot rod, that's a Morris Minor, sorry, not Morris Minor, Morris um, 8 Series E, I think, is the basis for that one. Golf GTI convertible, Triumph TR4, TR4A, I think. Yes. The TR4A had the independent rear suspension, I believe, and the big clue to them is the chunky oh, side indicator. There's one for Wrenchy Wedge. Yeah, Volkswagen Scirocco. And Sam as well. Yep, yeah, Porsche 928. Uh, next to it with a pantograph rear wiper, Sierra Cosworth, some people like those. And in the background... <laughs> I was waiting for you to pick up on that. Yeah, you can hear the stationary engines. Let's go and have a quick look at those. I didn't want to talk over the stationary engines. They just sound marvellous. They smell absolutely fantastic. Mark II Jaguar. Oh, sorry, no, name of V8 250. Um, an earlier one with a deep bumper, so technically a two and a half litre. Right, oh, okay. there is some stuff here. There is some stuff. We will get to this stuff in a moment. But we've got a few rows down here oh, we need to check hot out. Hot rods for sale. <laughs> no, thank you. No, not feeling that. No. Yeah. So. Not my Fiera. Yes, um, giving us a headlamp wiper moment there. <laughs> One uh, for fairly wrenching. lowly spec on the Scirocco. Wrenching Note wrench and Sammy. It hasn't got the extra lamps, so that's just screaming poverty. I'm liking that. Uh, the Porsche 928 showing off its pop-up lamps and its V8 engine, four and a half liter, I think. Worsley 1500. Oh wow. Uh, based on Ooh. the Morris Minor platform, kind of expanded a bit. Uh, with a B series engine. Revived in 2020, it's only done 24,000 miles. Oh wow, <laughs> we're over 25 next to it. Nice Beetle. Mazda RX-8 demonstrating its um, remarkable oh, wow. doors. So, got an extra door for the rear access, That's as well as of cool. course uh, a Vankel rotary engine. Mark 1 Focus facelift, but still they're getting on a bit now. Enough for MGB GT, Anglia 105E looks quite mean and moody. Oh, we've still got the Kent engine, I think, but uh, yeah, that, that carburetor hints at violence. Uh, Datsun Z, I'm not sure if that's a 260 or a 240. Uh, oh, it's for sale. Under oh, no, the trailer's for sale. Oh. Uh, it is apparently a 240Z uh, in um, left hand drive form. In very rare right hand drive now, lovely Datsun. Um, I think it's a Sunny Coupe, or is it 310? I get very confused with my 70s Datsuns. Got a very mean looking uh, Celica here, uh, an ST apparently. Wow. Uh, from 1978, it's the same age as me. Aww. And I like, I look just as mean. Um. Um, moving swiftly on. However, the Celica is for sale. Oh, oh, yes. There's a beauty. You can see where they went to town aping the uh, uh, the uh, Ford Mustang in styling terms, but lovely rear light details. Five speed gearbox, you know, pretty advanced stuff for the time. Uh, 7,000 pounds. I don't think that's a bad price at current Celica values. 27. Oh, 27. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not buying that then. Uh, we're behind a Zodiac Mark III. Quite so a lot larger than the Mark II. Yeah. I've lost which row we're on. Yeah, it's a bit confusing, yeah. isn't it? Should we go Should along we go this one a bit middle? more? Yeah. yeah. We've got Morgan, uh, Alpha GTV Spider, uh, BMW M3 of the E36 type. I love these. Very pretty looking car. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Skoda Felicia. Uh, so a bit different. Nice Skoda alloys on it. Uh, really? Capri of a fairly lowly spec, I think. Oh, look at the interior. Yeah. And oh, we seem to have found oh, ourselves look, at the caravan again. Caravan. How did that happen? I don't know how that happened. Oh, that is really, that but, is just, just beautiful. Yeah. And so, so is the Rover 100 
Toka. Yeah, this is very true. And they're matching. Yeah. Lovely. Right, go through. Isn't that goals, dear? Yeah. Intriguing. I think that's a Spartan, possibly, kit car. Very, very Morgan-esque. Little Mini on the end. Uh, an enormous Chevrolet pickup. Oh, it's a shame Mini Hubnut isn't yeah. here today. However, Mini Hubnut is having a wonderful time. So. People's soft tops compared. We've got Morris Minor next to a Beetle there. And uh, interesting, this uh, Volkswagen uh, camper here, note the wipers are set for right-hand drive, which means this has come from Australia. Uh -huh. Australia, the only company, uh, the only country rather, to have that wiper set up. Uh, Mercedes-Benz SL, gorgeous um, open Manta here, giving us another headlamp wiper moment. It's a Berlinetta, which I think was the lower spec. That is very lovely. I do like these a great deal. 1.8, which I think was the later overhead cam engine. I could be wrong. Yeah, I like that a lot. Let's go and see what we've got next to it. I'll have to go right up to the badge on this one. It is a Lee Francis. So a fun fact is the chief test driver for decades at Jaguar began his career as an apprentice at Lee Francis. Norman Jewis. P-type, apparently. Ah, a sloping headlamp beetle convertible. A proper Carmen beetle, that, that is uh, looking very nice. Rover uh, P4 again. Ooh. And look at this, what is this? A Buick 8. Is that a straight 8? So they have, cars of this era in America have bonnets that sort of open in several directions. It is a straight 8 engine. It's absolutely enormous. It is. It's even bigger than Betty. Yeah. Right, let's go down the other side and we'll have a look at the engine. Dyna Flow. Roadmaster. Just amazing names. And the comparison between this and the tiny little Mini <laughs> next to it. Yeah, that's well, look, hilarious. Look, that's, mini and that, oh, that's one of the last of the original Mini Coopers, Still I think, car. on the Cape plate. <laughs> so that's very nice to see. But yeah, there is the um, fireball <laughs> straight eight engine. Huge. Yeah, there's the Mini Cooper showing off its um, twin SU carburettors. Another Mazda MX-5. Uh, it's Morris 8, we see quite a lot. Hello. Hello there, how are you? <laughs> so we see this event. Both, both of these, the Armstrong Siddeley and the Morris, were at um, Bali Saturday. They were indeed, and on the car meets for Cardigan Club. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, good to see those. Another MX-5, Mark 1, getting rare now. And uh, here's the uh, Cortina Mark 1 and Daimler V8 that came in a little earlier. Yeah. A few tractors here today, but a BMC Mini <laughs> is quite an intriguing little one. Alice Chalmers, Depfomatic next to a David Brown Selectomatic. Oh yes, language of the day. A lovely Series 1 Land Rover with a um, little trailer as well, next to a Series 3. Oh, well, is that a Series 3? It's on a 68 plate, so it can't be a Series 3. Hmm, intriguing. Uh, Cosworth, nice. another one. I oh, didn't even know there was a Welsh Spitfire Museum, so there we go, oh, now we know. Oh, in West. Yeah, and now we've got more Land Rovers. Yeah, quite a rare Celica there, convertible. I don't see many of those around anymore. I forget which generation that is. I always get my Celica generations wrong. Everyone delights in telling me how wrong I am. A nice um, Chevy Stepside there. Triumph Stag, which presents us with yet another pantograph wiper moment. A bubble arched Mark 1 Escort. Droop Snoot. Mark II, the RS2000. <laughs> so there's an ideal chance to compare uh, the, the flat nose with the um, droopy snoot. Droopy snoot. Droopy snoot. <laughs> uh, Subaru Impreza. Another Datsun Z. What's this common one got in it? Ooh. That looks suspiciously like an RB25. Skyline engine in that one, so that must go quite well. Uh, Aston Martin. Porsche Boxster, uh, we, we've seen all these. Yeah, we have, we right have. There. Another 205 in rally trim. A Gilburn? Yeah, this Gilburn was at the Cars and Coffee meet I went to 
uh, in cardigan. I'm yet to ascertain what this is hiding under the bonnet, but I suspect it is not uh, the original 3 litre Essex V6. Uh, Toyota Starlet. Oh, come over from Ireland, GT oh. Turbo. Uh, well, I went to an all, all Toyota meet in um, Ireland, and there were loads of these. They absolutely love their Toyotas over there. It's not too difficult to get here. Nice to MGB. Uh, Rover, sorry, MG ZT with the uh, V6. Over 480. There's a nice car to find. I think it may be for sale. We're going to walk on by. Oh. <laughs> Uh, K-plate um, MGB GT, it's still got the black grill which came in for this era. But you'll note the bonnet has still got the pressing for the earlier style grill, which had a sort of a big sort of bar section that continued up into it. So they changed the grill, but they didn't change the bonnet pressing because they didn't have enough money. Another Anglia 105V, what's this one got in it? Uh, again, I think it's Kent engine, but it's got two huge Weber carburettors on it. And look at the manifold. Absolutely beautiful. Yes, carrying on. Uh, Triumph TR3A. We can tell it's the TR3A because it's got the full width grill uh, and door handles. Luxury of luxuries. And then we've got a pair of Panther Callistas. Uh, quite stylish cars. And then? And then we've got the mighty Avon Time. Look, at, look how giddy my camera lady is. Oh, so gosh. nice to see one in the flesh. I hope to be doing a video on one of these fairly soon. Yeah, we did have the intention and then something went pear shaped. Yeah, but I think I'm going to be driving one in the Netherlands, so... I will not be there. That'll be good. That's not fair. Do you know how you can make that up to me? What? We can go and fish that Velsatis out of Channing Grove. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. No. God, I love these. Yeah. They are super stylish. We have a sort of clever, as we'll see in the video, double hinged door. Because obviously the door is enormous, but... Technically, the last Matra ever built was one of these. And fun fact, I think we've probably mentioned before, is a linguistic joke. Oh yeah, the ling they well, are well, before well, oh, time. No, they are before time. Yeah. Yeah. Combination time. of languages. Oh, is it open? Okay, we've been given permission to open the door. So yeah, the, you've got a double hinge, so it doesn't actually open up too wide. You can still sort of sneak in. Because it is massive. It is massive. And the, the engineering in those doors is truly exceptional. I think they blew most of the budget on those hinges and up Ooh. goes the window to maintain the window seal. So yeah, lovely car. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Triumph Spitfire 1500, that's the last of those. Oh. Morris Minor Traveller. We know how much work. We know how much work is involved in restoring yeah. one of those. Uh, Morris Minor thousand, uh, with the nine four eight cc engine. Should have bought put your RS on your dad. Uh, Mercedes Benz SL again. They made these for a really long time. They were introduced in nineteen seventy one, I think, and production ran all the way to the late eighties. Many, yeah. many powers. Many powers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh uh, ooh, hello this is a rover 100 but it's got the um, 1.8 variable valve timing engine out of um, a sister rover and uh, they were also fit to mgfs hence the fat fat rubber yeah. on those tires <laughs> escort xr3 on the um, classic uh, cloverleaf alloys very very nice a, a mildly disheveled beetle i'm liking that rather a lot Another Mark 1 MX-5, this one a bit modified, it's even got a bit of drift stitching on it. In fact, there's a few scrapes on the back that suggest this has done a fair bit of drifting in its time. And also it's got it written all across the windscreen. Oh yeah, Drift Missouri <laughs> is one of the big um, drift meets. So yeah, oh, quite wow. funky. <laughs> another Mark 2 Escort, uh, another late MGB with a rubber bumpers, Audi Quattro. Very, very nice. From about 1984. Um, an MGB, I'm loving the wind deflectors on this one. So we've got a hard top with wind deflectors. Looks a little home brew. I'm liking that an awful lot. E Type Jaguar. I got so excited about the Singer Vogue. Here it is again. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even look at the E Type Jaguar, but they are beautiful cars. Uh, nice Austin A35 for sale, price and application. Very nice um, Hillman Imp. California, hello, how are you doing? 
right. Is this oh, yours? Yes, this is mine. Yeah. Very nice. What year? 67? Yeah. Yeah. Super. The only one here, I think. Yeah. yeah. There is a clan down there. Which yeah, we is, saw uh, the clan earlier on, the clan crusader. Place, but, uh, yeah. Have you had this one long? Uh, 2006 I bought it mm -hmm. and uh, I've done a respray on it and a mechanical overall. And it's actually got a 998cc Ooh, nice. uh, rebuilt sport engine in it. Very so nice. It's got a bit more poke. Yes, I'm reminded nice. I must yeah. do an imp video at yeah. some point. Yeah, well, it's not running great at the moment, but you know, maybe yeah, we could. Yeah, that'd be fun. Over that. Yeah, at cool. Some point. Thank you. We'll, we'll have a look around. Yeah, yeah. So the imp California has got the. Uh, slopey back um sort of fastback styling which means you do lose the opening rear glass of the uh, standard saloon and then here in the back is the uh, fantastic little very revy four cylinder engine at 998 cc in this case but they were actually 875 from the factory and this is a uh, very pleasant an old austin 10 i think not very good on my pre-war austins Master MX-5 showing us its headlamps, little MG midget, and uh, what is this one? A Quantum. Ah, I didn't know Quantum built one like this. Uh, obviously, very Lotus Seven inspired. Many companies, including Westfield, Westfield sadly just gone bankrupt, built cars like this. But this one built by Quantum, who are more famously known for this style of car. It's got the Sierra rear lights and uh, I think Fiesta running gear if I remember rightly yeah so it's based on a Fiesta XR2 lovely Jaguar XJ40 reminds me of my Daimler my hopeless hopeless Daimler lovely Chevrolet here look at those bumpers and next to it one of the great disasters of our time the Ford Edsel uh, this is a later facelift version and uh, one of Ford's huge white elephants, if you'll pardon the expression with this colour, uh, just seemed to attack a sector of the market that didn't really exist, so they didn't sell in great numbers. It's somewhat dwarfing this Mark 1 Cortina, that is looking very nice. As is this uh, Saab 900 next to it. Base model, so it's got no toys. That is full hub nut spec, headlamp wipe for moment. Oh yes. And next to it, a Beaufort. Very popular as wedding cars, uh, but they're in, entirely fake. I think it's Mark III Cortina running gear under the skin. Nice to see a slightly earlier Herald with the heavy chrome Love headlamps. Color. Yeah, very nice colour. Uh, got Rolls Royce Silver Spirit. Gives ah, us another Pantograph wipe at the moment. Wedding fleet. Oh, it could well be. Very cool. Uh, MGB, about 1967. And standard Vanguard Phase 2. So, not the bustle back version. <laughs> Loving uh, the cat in the... Uh, oh yeah, it may, it may have ingested a cat slightly. <laughs> Lovely condition, the paint is so flat. Uh, I love it. Uh, next to its stable mate at the time, the Triumph Renown, with its razor edge saloon styling. So yeah, great to see both of those. Another Escort RS2000 next to a Nova, three-door Nova with its chunky arches. We are very much Ford country around here. Yeah. <laughs> Another Vauxhall VX490. This is Sorry, starting to get really weird. Since Little Miss Hubnut drove yeah, a VX490, we see, them we see them everywhere. We never see the standard Victors anymore, only the sporty VX490. There again, we keep seeing green Berlingos, and we never yeah. saw those before. Uh, Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, like a one. It must be um, fairly late towards the end of the production of the one. The two came in with chunkier um, impact bumpers. Look at this massive Lincoln. Lincoln Premier? That is huge. Never heard of one. I'm not very good that on my American huge. cars. Yeah, love the fake scoops down the back on the rear doors. That's splendid. A uh, couple of minis, one of them exceedingly colourful. Oh my goodness. Look at that for a paint job. That is cool. Yeah. That's very, very funky. Oh, look at this for a oh, colour. Oh my goodness. Oh, look. And above another. Yeah. All the purple. Beautiful. That is How very nice. Mini club? Yeah. Oh, we've got a boxy Volvo. Oh, lovely. If you like your cars designed with a ruler, the Volvo 700s are definitely the ones for you. Oh, headlamp wiper moments. 
And uh, I don't know what that is. We'll just walk past that one, yeah? Marks this Escort convertible. Nice. Or cabriolet, rather. Very nice. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, hello. Volkswagen Golf GTI 24 valve. Someone has managed to shoehorn a VR6 engine in. So it is technically a V6, but you can see the line of the spark plugs. It's very, very narrow angle. The cylinders are just slightly offset from each other. So uh, a bit like la old Lancia V4 engines. So you get six cylinders, but it's still quite a compact um, engine, which is why you can cram it under the bonnet of a Mark II Golf. Very nicely done. Oh, looks like a, a GTI Rally. Or is it just a body kit Paul Cowland from Detelli would like? Might be a Zender body kit or something. Some details in the back, I'm going to go and it's have a look. It's a different aesthetic, isn't it? Yeah. Very, very of its time. Oh, it's Hella. Hella auto styling. So it's got a full Hella body kit on it. Rear spoiler. That's, uh, that's really nice. Lovely condition. Uh, another day move with a V8. This is the later V8 250 with a slimline bumpers compared to that white one we saw earlier. A Riley. Very nice. I think that yeah, must be a pre-war one. It's not an RM, I don't think. What a lovely setup. Yeah. Yeah, look at this. Oh, Beautiful. Splitty. It's a left-hand drive, so it is an import at some point. Beautiful. But that is absolutely Beautiful. magnificent. Yeah. Always nice to see one with actual ground clearance. <laughs> uh, Chevy pickup. That's massive. Look at this. That's huge. Yeah. Look how tiny I look. You do look rather tiny next to uh, the enormous Chevy. Bedford CF uh, camper, used to have one myself. So I'm just giving people a, a slightly higher perspective. We'll just have a quick pan around. Look, we've still got all that to come. So good times. Another bubbly arched Mark I Escort. Oh, beautiful Austin this A35 is van. glorious, I spotted this. Yeah. Beautiful. And another couple of minis. A Mark I showing off the earlier door design there, the sliding windows. In Interestingly, Australia hated these windows. They weren't enough, they just didn't provide enough ventilation. So Australia developed a quarter light and winding window for their Mark I Minis. And they actually kept those doors. The Australians keep, kept producing effectively Mark I Mini bodies because they didn't have the pressings for the later ones. Uh, some Austin's going on, a little seven there by the look of it, box saloon. We had one of those at the social. We did. And a, a, a much bigger sibling next to it. Uh, 12 or 16 as I guess That's lovely. and then another little seven and another Morris Minor Traveller some nice wood on that one Volkswagen Carmen gear there, there are loads of separate panels all around the front of these cars it's actually a proper jigsaw of panels and then I think it's lead loaded to give it a smooth finish and look like it's all one utterly beautiful cars and under the skin it's a Volkswagen Beetle <laughs> Speaking of which, ta da! <laughs> yeah, very nice. And uh, yeah, one family owned both those Volkswagens, uh -huh. so very different. Uh, Ford Anglia looks um, purposeful. Wonder and what's under really the bonnet of that. Doggy. They've got a cute dog. Ooh. Mark II Escort four door. Rare to see a four door these days. Um, Mercedes Benz W123CE, the coupe version. Very nice. Not a headlamp wipe a moment. <laughs> Was that Ooh, the third? Chevrolet Camaro. That is a beautiful looking car. I like that very much. Another, oh, I'll say you don't see them. Look, it's another Mark II Escort four door saloon. There you go. <laughs> uh, another Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Look at those side pipes. Oh, no, crazy. I bet you can tell when that's running. And again, that's got the pop up flap for the windscreen wipers to pop out. Gilburn Invader here. That's uh, the, the Welsh car. Built above a butcher's shop originally, Gilburn's were. Lovely Maestro. Uh, what's that? I reckon an L. Yes, it's a 1.3 L. So it's got the 1.3 A series engine, transverse form. Yeah. Oh, the lovely dealer plates still on it. Interesting. There's an MG uh, TF. It says, it's, something's feeling slightly, well, something must be off because it's on a 1968 number plate. So I think that's a replica of a TF midget. The wipers look all wrong. So that's not the real deal. Heavens forbid. Yeah, MG um, Magnet, um, ZA, I think. 
No, ZB, ZB very tone. Come around the back. Your very tone got your two tone paint and it also got you a much larger rear window. Uh, this is from up the road to us. Is it? Yeah, yeah, Shanna. Ah, uh, oh yeah, we have sent around on occasion. Beautiful cars, the um, MG Magnets. Got the B series engine, 1.5. Uh, very, very nice. Moving along, Boris Minor Traveller. Uh, compared to a rather more modern take on an estate car. Look at that, Mark 1 Escort Estate. Oh. That's very, very when pleasant. The time comes, but that's in the future. Uh, Mark 1 Fiesta. Very, very nice. We know where there's one of those being restored at the moment. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, Austin A40 Farina. One that is perhaps a smidgen crispy at the moment. Yeah, another A35 van. I think these were very popular around here. You see an awful lot of them at shows. Uh, Jaguar Mark II. Oh, this is a 340. So again, we've got the slimline bumpers like that Daimler I showed you earlier. These were the last of the line, made for the last couple of years of production. They cheapened the interior somewhat. They took out some of the nice leather and everything. But uh, yeah, baffling Jaguar range at the time. Uh, we, we saw this um, Alfa Romeo. Uh, Bali um, Saturday and, and the um, Escort RS Turbo next car to it as well. The cardigan on 17th of July. Yeah, we'll see if we can get there. We might struggle for that one. And then we've got a Dodge Viper uh, with the um, V10 engine. Uh, that's a big old lump of car. And next to it, a Vauxhall PA Cresta or Velox. It is a Cresta. The Cresta is a slightly more plush model. I have done a test drive on a Velox. A big six cylinder engine, tiny little carburetor, column gear change, lovely, lovely cars to drive. Uh, BMW Z4. One of the details I like on the Z4, as well as the fact it's got a big six cylinder engine, side indicators. Oh, they're funky. Yeah, it's a really nice detail. Uh, Chris Bangle designed the American designer. He loved his um, sharp edges, uh, but I think that is definitely one of his more pleasing designs. Next to an R129 SL, Bruno Sarko designed those. Very, very nice. Oh, TVR Tamar. One for up and down vids. He is a TVR specialist. As well as an Aussie Ford specialist. Indeed. Uh, Morris Minor, another MGB GT, quite late, that one, I think. Another one of those super rare Mark II Escorts. Uh, and another one in beige. They're only super rare, beautiful so anywhere beige. outside of like Curly Gum, Pembrokeshire. Yeah, yeah, we had a look earlier. It's beautiful car. Uh, Mazda MX-5 Mark II. Uh, Golf Mark II with um, a slightly purposeful looking engine bay. And we've got a, a rather mean Golf here on the end as well. Mark IV R32. Nice. Uh, I think Ooh. you might go giddy for that. Lilac. Color. That is all of the lilac. All of the all lilac. Of it. That is excellent. And we've got the. Um, oh, four, God. It's got some great stickers on there. I'm not yeah. going to. Yeah, maybe family channel. Might not all be family friendly. Uh, that's the um, Ford Popular or Prefect or Anglia. It seems to have various identities assigned to it, but it's got um, it's a Mazda MX-5 under the skin. So I saw this at the Cars and Coffee Meet. Very, very nicely done. Renault Clio, a two litre. That must be quite exciting. Another Mark One Golf GTI. Very nice. Mark II Cortina, a Lotus Cortina. So that's got the same Lotus twin cam engine as that Lotus uh, Elan Plus Two that we were looking at fairly recently. Another Austin A30, is 35, sorry. It's got the four-door saloon body. Trump Spitfire showing off its um, engine bay, which appears to be a six-cylinder engine. So that's more a Triumph GT6 convertible. They didn't make any from the factory, but plenty of people have made them since. And uh, this is a very interesting car, Rover 75, merged with Mercedes-Benz E-Class by um, Jerry Lloyd, who's here talking to folk. Uh, I met him some years ago, because he builds all sorts of magnificent creations on the Rover 75 platform. He's built a coupe, he's built this beautiful cabriolet, and uh, he's built a double end of its two front ends as well. I think you should go around the back okay. and have a look at this one, because that's where the real beauty of this car is. Yeah. And, even the boot lid is a split between Mercedes E-Class and Rover 75. So it's a beautiful job and it looks absolutely glorious. And those very familiar dials in there. Yeah, <laughs> classy interior. Uh, quite an early, um, M sorry, MGA, Morgan pl plus four um, with the four seats in the back. 
1968, and whereas this is more 1997, possibly, although it was a private plate, could be put me off a bit. Whereas mine with the old side valve engine. So that's very nice. Uh, Trump claim, I think that came on a run with us earlier this year. MGA, very, very pretty. It's very, very busy. It's quite hard to actually get near the cars at this point. I'm doing my best, doing my yeah. best. Another Spartan kit car, I think. Probably got a Moss badge on it, so maybe not. Uh, a somewhat patinated Volkswagen Beetle. It's a rather nice patination. Yeah, I like that. And uh, Toyota Supra. Hey, oh, this is a wooden picket Mini. So Wooden Picket was a company that sort of customised them for wealthy um, clientele. So tune the engine up, Whoa. custom leather interior. Look at that. Lo it looks like aircraft in there. It's stunning. Uh, D seam, so there's no roof seam co coming around the back here. Luxury of luxuries, a rear wiper. So that is a really nice example. That's very nicely done. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Are you okay to open the door and have a look? Yeah, yeah. yeah. come on, camera, have a look. Gosh, it's beautiful. beautiful. They really did go to town on these, they didn't did, they? Yeah, they did. Have you had this one long? Six years. Okay. It's done 12,000 miles from new. Oh, gosh. Totally original interior. Wow. Just oh. had a fresh lick of paint to freshen it up from storage, you know? Yeah. By the way, it's all original. Lovely. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. That's like a mini. Rolls Royce. <laughs> yeah. It is, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what this van is, so we're going to have to go around the front. But look how simple <laughs> these are. There's no luxuries in there. Uh, oh, it's a Thames. So it's uh, Thames was Ford's take a step sort of back for this one. <laughs> commercial uh, department. The normal vans were that wide. So this one's got a wide body on it. So it obviously carries something fairly light, but fairly bulky. That's lovely to see. Toyota Carina E estate. Good to see. A Rover P6 in tobacco leaf. That's a very early Series 2. The Series 2 had these um, sort of bonnet extensions and this sort of black grill. Uh, Triumph TR6 there. Oh, oh, I'm going to like the next row. Uh, I know, Rover I can P4. see. Triumph Dolomite. Uh, possibly a Sprint. It's got the little chin spoiler. And then we're into Stag Central, a wide range of Stags. Lovely cars, the Stags, I do like them, they make such a lovely noise. And uh, we've got an MGF in one of my favourite Rover colours I've forgotten the name of. It's sort of coppery orange metallic, it looks absolutely beautiful. And this is a Turner, I think. Um, a very sort of small car manufacturer. But uh, they built cars usually with A-series running gear, I think. Back in the day, very nice, very rare. Moving along, little MG Midget. Uh, next to more stags. And uh, sadly a bit buried next to the stag, a Jawa Jupiter sports car. I'm getting in there, love. Again. Yeah, get in there, get in there. <laughs> so the Jupiter built in Bradford by the Jawa car company uh, with a flat four engine, quite unusual for the time. And uh, yeah, these are remarkable cars. I would love to drive one of these. I've never driven a Jupiter, only the saloon Javelin. I'm not sure how easy it is to work on. It sort of looks like it should be easy, but uh, it also looks like it'll smack your head. Uh, Chevrolet Corvette, which I think we've seen before, and the Mustang was also at the Cars and Coffee uh, Meet. I think it's very, very loud. Uh, now that's an oily rag restoration right there. You don't want to touch it, you will get oil on your hands. That uh, is, um, yeah, that is your rat look absolutely personified. Spot on. Yeah, and then here we've got a standard Vanguard. This is the Beetle back, uh, but it was a bit controversial at the time. People couldn't quite get on with the styling. So for the phase two, they turned it into more of a conventional saloon at the back. But yeah, lovely cars. Very, very robust. Very solidly built. And a little Spitfire at the end of that line. Sierra Cosworth, based on the original uh, three-door body shell, uh, all of the whale tail. So, so dominant in motorsport with its Cosworth turbocharged four-cylinder engine. And a nice looking car as well. Uh, Saab 900, again there, I think. So yeah, I was wrong, it is a 90. So I'm glad I corrected myself, it didn't feel quite right. The 90 is a really odd mix of the 99 front end with the later 900 rear. 
never entirely sure where it sat in the range. Uh, Audi TT, uh, looking very splendid. We will get over there at some point because Australian. Yeah, we got to do this systematically. Okay, we got to do it systematically. MGF, looking very pretty there. Another Triumph Stag, and uh, an Audi A3. Uh, Lotus Cortina. Is that the one we followed in? No, no it's no, another one. No, that was a four door, which was oh, intriguing because yes, they didn't yes, make any. Didn't um, exist. Say it, Leon. So you tell one me. One Mr. Jalco there. Yeah, Mr. Jalco. Audi Coupe, the slightly later shape. Um, Austin A35, next to an Austin Ambassador. Go and look at the interior. Look at that. How much beige would you like? We've got all the beige. It's even got the wool seat covers. That's absolutely magnificent. Yeah, not, not a great success based on the earlier Wedge Princess, um, but turned into a hatchback at last. Oh. And in production for all of two years. Look at this uh, little beastie. Yeah, a Renault Clio in there somewhere. <laughs> That's very colorful. Another Triumph TR6. And a Vauxhall Forenza Droop Snoot. Is uh, the technical term actually droop snoot? Yeah. You don't believe oh me, do goodness. you? I've just seen them. Um, I've just yeah, seen sporty a seat. sticker for the Camry love. Oh, financial mistake. <laughs> yeah, that would fit that very well. Yeah, lovely styling on the friends. It's basically a HC Viva Coupe, but with um, the bigger slant four engine up front. Uh, 2.3 litres, I think. Austin A30. Fiat X19, we know how much fun Fiat X19s are. Cortina. Here is that four door Cortina we saw earlier. I uh, don't know if it is looking like a Lotus, maybe it has a Lotus engine, we don't know. BMW E46 M3, very, very beautiful cars. Uh, the nice Beetle, loving the alloys on that. That's they look nice. beautiful. I'm liking this um, Volkswagen as well, the uh, T25. Thank you. Uh, look at the interior. It's done all, all sort of check. I'll bring it up because you are quite small. Beautiful interior on that. That's looking really nice. Have you seen the pickup bed? Yeah, look at the bed in the back. And then you've got extra storage down here as well. Look at that. Just in time to see that getting shown off. So that's a lovely example, very modified. Uh, MGTD, the first of the T-type midgets to have independent front suspension. Came with steel wheels as standard. Much controversy. And uh, not, about 19, 47, 48, I think these came out. The Vastin Healy 3000, beautiful car. Next to an MGA Coupe, that is a rarity. I'm just trying to find an angle where we can see got it. Got it, got it. Yeah, very rare uh, car. You don't see many of those. Uh, quite aerodynamic, but a little claustrophobic. It doesn't compact. Yeah, uh, TVR Cerbera, very, very nice. Uh, which engine does that got? Some of them had TVR's own V8 engine, which is that one. Uh, or you could later have the Speed 6 engine. Very nice. Nice, lovely. Uh, MGA with a uh, hardtop. Uh, an MGB with the interesting addition of um, side indicators. Look at the pipe work in here. Uh, that's interesting. Is that nitrous oxide? <laughs> I think that might be. Wow. Um, Austin A35. Uh, Porsche 911 993. Very intriguing wipers on the 993. Very, very close together. Uh, this is the preceding 964 generation, which is very much like the earlier ones, but with bigger bumpers. And then what we got here, a uh, very early Humber. Let's have a look in that engine bay. Wow. The tiny little wiper. <laughs> Oh, that's dinky. Yeah. So yeah, dinky little four-cylinder engine. Wow, the enormous dynamo that looks like it might have a chain drive or something. It hasn't got a belt drive. Very strange. No cooling fan. We've just got firmer siphon cooling. So here's a little beauty, a smart roadster uh, with the uh, three-cylinder engine, the semi-automatic gearbox of much controversy but oh my gosh the styling so cute this one belongs to um, james walsh of practical classics magazine we've just been having a if merry chat Twitter, you yeah <laughs> we're having a merry chat about berlingos uh, as you do but uh, next to it beautiful in beige i've never seen one in beige before lancia fulvia 
Uh, it's a fairly light one. Uh, for the UK regs, they had to raise the outer headlamps in height slightly. So the left-hand drive ones remained flat. But uh, narrow angle V4 engine, front wheel drive. Uh, Pat Moss absolutely loved these as a rally car. Uh, lovely cars, great engineering. Uh, MGB about in 1964, I think. Quite early for an MGB. Very, very nice. Uh, Triumph 2000 of the Mark II variety with a Triumph Stag-esque front end, but it's got a two litre straight six engine. Still got the triplex laminated windscreen. That's really nice. Looks very, very original, that one. Uh, we've got a Jaguar uh, 420, is it? Or is it the Mark 10? Slightly confused by this one. It hasn't got the side indicator, so it can't be a 420G. I think it is a Mark 10. The triple carburettors. Uh, it's got a 4.2 litre engine in this one. And look at the size of the seats. That's enormous. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? Beautiful. They were hoping uh, for these to be uh, successful in America, but Americans just couldn't get on with the six cylinder engine. They wanted a V8, which is, which is why Jaguar went down the V12 route um, after that. Uh, another Mark II Jag, 2.4 litre, so this is the baby of the range. Uh, Inspector Morse, he drove a 2.4 litre in a TV programme, MGTF. I've seen A40, uh, I can never remember if it's Devon or Dorset on these. It is a Devon, so the Devon's the four door, the Dorset was a two door version. Uh, the sort of post-war Austin, another Mark II. One of those rare Mark II Escorts in four doors you never see. Dodge Look, Ram. They're all hiding in the hills right here. That's Dodge where Ram. Again, again, I think we need you for a sense of scale with this one. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah. Dodge Rams. Quite big, it turns out. A Ferrari Dino, I think. That was at Bali Saturday. Beautiful car. And an M uh, Mitsubishi FTO next to it. With a You're getting rather so close. Striking body. Uh, kit on it. It's your Australian fix here. Yeah. Another 107, I think. Uh, 280 SL, so that's a six cylinder version. Another Porsche Boxster, another Triumph Herald, very nice. Love the side stripe. Very smart. Uh, an MGB in um, a later Rover colour. Tahiti Blue, I think. Another MX5. Uh, a Nissan 350Z. Which uh, we saw this at Cars and Coffee, and people were moaning we didn't have this more one. of a look at it. So let's have more of a look at it. I think uh, Little Miss Hubnut would be into this. Yeah, I think it's very much her sort of car. It's very got amazing her. graphics on it. <laughs> Sorry, hey, good match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not going to focus on it. But we'll let it out that one. <laughs> Beautiful. But that is seriously, uh, yes. Little Miss Hubnut would be all over that. Yeah, some slammage going on. All the slammage. Yeah. It's about a 2005 Morgan, I think. <laughs> Love the number plate. Lotus Elise, look how dainty the original Lotus Elise looks now. Uh, super stripped out lightweight car. Uh, very nice uh, minivan. Very late one, probably about a 1982. Still with a fixed grill. Shiny. Uh, Audi R8 in shiny, shiny. All the shiny. Yeah. Mark II Granada limousine. Oh. So, um, That's quite smart. Dearest. Uh, so it's got a CM badge on it. So Coleman Mill probably built that. Will they you, built hearses, limousines. Um, they, they did AUs. Oh, you, yes. can, you can hire this one. We should get married. If you do what? We should get married. So you've got all the leg room, occasional rear seats that tumble out there. I am loving there. the fur rug as well. Yeah. That's a bit of class. <laughs> That's very nice. Oh, come on. Let's get married. No. Yes. Uh, Mazda MX-5, looking very, very nice there, but yeah, here's our um, Australian moment. Uh, a pair of, I think they're Vauxhall VXRs badged over here, but they are Holdens uh, with um, LS V8 engines, I believe. Um, I'm slightly intrigued by this one. This one's got a supercharger on it. But uh, look at this, you've got a jack shaft all the way to the back. That's a very intriguing setup. So yeah, it says Vauxhall Monaro, but they are Australian built. Mark II Astra, GSI badge, but I don't think the GSI ever came as a five door. So maybe um, it's been made, but look at this gorgeous Auto Bianchi van. 
Um, I have actually spoken to this company, uh, but yeah, they're a restoration company, so this is kind of an example of what they can do. Isn't it lovely? But the Auto Bianchi is based on uh, Fiat 500 running gear. And uh, wow, well, it was written off with only 2,800 miles on the clock. Aww. Left in a corner at Angel Motors Carmarthen uh, until the garage closed in 1985. Wow. So they didn't take any before photos, but it has been beautifully restored. And Stepside Coachworks is the company that did the work. So uh, I must get in touch with them. Uh, lovely um, Trump Dolomite, go and check out the uh, rear seat cover. Yeah, I was just looking at that. Yeah, that's um, very of its time. Kind of all, all the rage back then. Another Triumph, but this one's the 2500S. Uh, they did a 2.5 with mechanical fuel injection, but it was a bit problematic. So their solution was to do a twin carb version, slightly sportier of the two and a half, um, but with much less complication. Uh, Mazda MX-5s variously. And look at this, it's a Bristol 412. Uh, it became the bow fighter later in life. It's a remarkable looking car. So Bristol Motors always did things differently. So, uh, like this flap, for instance, but on oh, one wow. side hides the battery, and then this side hides a full size spare wheel. Uh, but yeah, carry on round. That's cool. Because the styling is most unusual on these. So, you've got this um, sort of uh, removable rear section roof, we've got uh, a Targa section as well. Kind of looks. Oh, boost. Interesting. Uh, it kind of looks a bit like uh, a Lancia Beta, but much, much bigger. Uh, an intriguing car. And uh, next up, we've got another um, Austin Healey 3000. We've got a Mercedes-Benz 190 SL. So the 300 SL Gullwing was a bit too complicated, a bit too expensive, a bit too specialist. So this was conceived, very similar styling to the 300 SL. So even got the, uh, the sort of those strakes along the wheel arches, uh, but a four cylinder engine, much more simple and uh, hugely popular in America as a result. Uh, chimney. Uh, chimney. That's looking very, very cute. I love that color. Yeah, I do like a chimney. Uh, Mazda MX-5 NC, the Mark III. Morris Oxford Series 2, I think we may have seen that one before at a show. Escort Mark III gear. All the poshness, get your chrome trims on. And a very nice Mark 1 Capri 1.6. That looks very original. Lovely. Mark 3 Cortina, mildly dishevelled. Just adds to it. I love this. I don't necessarily want to see all cars being shiny, shiny. This has just got a feeling of age about it. You can't fake that. It just looks bob on. I like it. Uh, Mark 2 Golf. Again, it's uh, lots of colour coordination going on, very very 1980s, it's got the hella driving lamps. Ah, special edition. Golf match, okay. Mm. Wow. Oh yeah, look at it, we've got the stripes on the inside. The yeah, go and have a look at the, the outside. In interior. This is nice. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. That's very, very retro. Uh, Tiger Racing, another one of those Lotus 7-esque things, this one with a Ford VTEC engine, uh, AC Cobra replica. Mazda MX-5, Mark two and a half, uh, Jaguar X308 with the uh, V8 engine. And look at this. This is one of the cars of the show, I think. It's Renault 18 Estate Diesel. It's uh, absolutely magnificent. Just one of those cars you never see anymore. I'm still in the camera. In. I'm off, I'm gone. I'm still in the camera. Just to have a look at the back. Did some Mark two, 18 TD. Absolutely splendid. I like that very much. Uh, that's next to a Morris 8, which is next to a Jaguar S type. I did a video on one of these. It's an evolution of the oh. Mark II platform. Yeah, Volvo 240 GLT it's estate. Not my Volvo, not my Volvo. Not my Volvo, yeah. Nice only headline wipers though. Only it's not. <laughs> yeah, lovely condition. And then we've got Nissan Figaro in grey. That's one of the standard factory the colours. Four factory colours. Uh, another Cobra replica, and another nice MGB, complete with kidney choppers on the headlamps. So Jaguar S type of the more modern vintage, it was a reuse of that name. You can kind of see they were trying to go down the retro theme with that. 
Land Rover Series 2. Very nice. Another Triumph TR4. Called Kev. Oh, Hi, this Kev. is Kev the TR4. There you go. Really nice um, MX-5 Monza Limited Edition. Very stylish. Um, MGB, very, very 70s colour. Has it got the black grille? It has. Uh, again, we already learned about the humpiness uh, for an earlier grille. No, fairly modern Morgan, Jaguar XK8. Very clever, basically an updating of the XJS format. Another Porsche Boxster, uh, quite common at this show. Look at this. Beige and brown. And again, it's the four-seater version. All the beige and brown, yeah. it's internal. Uh, Triumph TR6. And I, I can't remember what I... Is, it's not inky yellow, that's a bit too dark for that. Uh, I forgot what the colour's called, but very, very rare to see one in that original colour. Most have been resprayed. Uh, Triumph Roadster, complete with a dicky seat and its own little windscreen <laughs> at the back. You get a windscreen, but you don't get a roof. Another Wolseley 1500, this one a bit nicer than the one we saw earlier. Fully restored by the look of it. Nice is not the right word, is it? The other one was more patinated. Uh, another Morgan. This one, uh, another... Four, a four, Morgan 4-4, four, four. there we go. Um, Morris Oxford uh, MO. Uh, uh, Mercedes-Benz SLK, oh, two SLKs. Worried then. Yeah, were you worried? Did that get you for I was worried, it got me. Ooh, Chevrolet Corvette. A more uh, modern one. Last of the front engine Corvettes. Chrysler Crossfire, that's a rarity now. Oh my gosh, it's a Stimson Scorcher. There's one in Newquay, by the way, Crossfire. Stimson Scorcher. I'm trying to get in there, I'm trying to get in there. So this terrifying contraption uh, is a trike based on mini running gear. So it's like a mini front subframe uh, and then it's three seats in total. Oh crikey. And uh, yeah, they're absolutely <laughs> incredible, crazy, crazy things. Uh, MGB GT again, Mark IV Golf Convertible. Now the Mark IV Golf Convertible is a cheat because all they did was fit the Mark IV front panels to the Mark III Golf convertible body. So when you come around the back, it's pure Mark III Golf. Apart from the fact they tinted the rear lamps. So there's a fun fact for you. They got lazy. And then next to it, we've got a Ford uh, Prefect, I think, because it's a four-door. It's got the old side valve engine and a three-speed gearbox. And uh, you see you've got the old um, thermosiphon cooling on it. Uh, another Triumph TR4A, I think, and another E46 BMW at the end. Now here's a beauty. Uh, the only one of these I've seen today, the old Landcrab um, Morris 1800, or is it an Austin? This is the Austin version. Yeah, lovely styling, but uh, the styling was at a bit odds with what was considered the norm at the time. It's got the doors that were later used on the Austin Maxi, uh, but lovely cars. And it's nice to see one. I think that is a car I need to um, get my hands on. Now into commercials. Lovely old Morris truck here next to a Morris Ital, which is looking absolutely splendid. Fair bit of history between those two. The headlamps up on the sides of the cab, uh, but they're not. The most illuminating. A uh, very nice uh, Type two, Volkswagen Type 2 pickup here. Nice little details, little side indicators, or maybe they're a parking light. I uh, don't know what market this would have been for initially. That's uh, very tasty. Reminding me of the electric classic cars <laughs> one that was, was um, that. Tesla powered, which is a way being restored, mm -hmm. so I understand at the moment. Uh, we've got guns. Are we allowed yeah. to look at guns? Uh, well, they are guns. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if yeah. YouTube allows them. And then, well, I think that's the Toyota Land Cruiser. That is cool. Giving it all of the sirens. Uh, that's like a standard Enzyme. The RAF bought loads of Enzymes, a, a lower spec <laughs> Vanguard. Oh no, everyone's off now. So yeah, it looks like it would have had a, a flag mount or something on the mm. bonnet. But uh, lovely cars. Daimler uh, Ferry. I think we've had a look around some one of these before. Very odd driving position, pre-selector gearbox. I think it's a six-cylinder petrol engine. Uh, got Land Rover forward controls with the doors removed. Uh, drove one of those for the 50,000 subs video. 
that belongs to Land Rover itself. Fun fact is that Land Rover developed a master cylinder failure on the way back from driving that. That was quite exciting. I was going to say, was that anything to do with you, Lab? Nothing to do with me. It just went a bit hubnut. Uh, Series 3 Land Rover in um, Desert Storm colours. And uh, a selection of Jeeps. Which almost brings us to the end uh, of our time here at the show. And I think we're probably going to finish here. It's a Trojan van with a Perkins diesel engine. Uh, not a vehicle you will see very often at all. So uh, very, very nice. But yeah, I think that brings us to the end of our time here at the show. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry this has turned into a very lengthy one, but it's an awful lot to see. And we'll see you in a future video. Farewell. Oh, of course you finished on a forward back. Of course I did.